ಶ್ರೀದುಗ್ರಹಾರಾಧನ ನಿಶ್ಚನ ಶೃಂಗಾರ ತನ್ನ ವಿರಮಾರ್ಜನಾದ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಂದೇ ಗುರಾಕ್ಷಿಚರಾರವಿಂದಿಧಾಕ್ಷೀ ಭಗವತ್ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಸದ್ಮಾನ್ನಕೃತ್ಯಾನ್ ಹರೀ ಭಕ್ತ ಸಂಹಾನ್ ಕೃತ್ತೈವೀರ್ತಿ ಭಜತೋ ಸದೈವ ವಂದೇ ಗುರಕ್ಷೀಚರಾರವಿಂದ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಿ ಕಾಮಯದ ಪಾದ ಮಾಧುರ್ಜಮಿಲಾಗುಣಪನಾಕ್ಷಾಧನುಪಾಸ ವಂದೇ ಗುರಾಕ್ಷಿಚರಾರವಿಂದಿ ಕಾಮಯದಾರ ಮಾಧುರ್ಜಲೀಲಾಗುಣ ಪ್ರತೀಕ್ಷಣ ಸಾಧನುಪಕ್ಷ ವಂದೇ ಗುರಾಕ್ಷೀಚರಾರವಿಂದ ಸಂಸಾರ ದಾಬಾನಂದಲೋಕ ಪ್ರಾಣಾಯ ಕಾರುಣ್ಯಘನ ಸಪ್ತಕಲ್ಯಾಣಗುಣಿಕುಂಜೂನಿಕ್ಷಿರಪೇಕ್ಷಣೀಯ ಕ್ಷಾಕ್ಷಾಧರೀತ್ರಿಣ ಸಮಸ್ತಾಶ್ರೀ ವೃತ್ತಸಭಾವಧೀ ಕಿಂತು ಪ್ರಭೋಜಾಪ್ರಿಯೇ ಗುರಾಕ್ಷೀಚರಾರವಿಂದ ವಂದೇ ಗುರಾಕ್ಷೀಚರಾರವಿಂದ ಯಸಾದಗವತ್ಪ್ರಸಾದ ಯಸಾದಿ ಕುಪಿ ಜಯಂಕ್ಷಿ ಸಂಧ ವಂದೇ ಗುರಾಕ್ಷೀಚರಾರವಿಂದ ಸಂಸಾರ ದಾಬಾನಂದಲೋಕ ಕಾರುಣ್ಯಧನಾಧನಾ 
discussing that everybody should work niyatam kuru karmatam karma jayu ya karmana sharira yatra api cha te na prasiddhe ta karmana jagyartha karmana annatra lokayam karma bandhana tadartham karma kauntiya mukta sanga samachare now this is the formula of spiritual realization that we should not stop our working capacity, the prescribed duty in which we are engaged, that is not to be stopped. If we stop work and spiritual realization for spiritual realization, we leave this world and go to the jungle or Himalaya and sit down there for meditation, for spiritual realization. Oh, how many people will be ready to do this thing? No. This is not for mass people. Lord Sri Krishna is prescribing something practical which can be adopted by every one and all without any distinction. This point we have already discussed in the last day's meeting, that whatever you may be, it doesn't matter. You can realize the highest perfection of life, provided you work under the regulation of jagya jagyatha karma. There is no harm 
working, but the work should be done for the Supreme Lord. Jagga. Jagga means Vishnu. Because according to uh, laws of nature, any work you do, it has got some reaction, and we are bound up by those reactions. The Vedas also says, karmana abhadhate jantu, karmana abhadhate jantu. The all living entities, they are bound up in this material uh, um, encasement uh, on account of their different kinds of karma or work. But here is the point that uh, you shall not be bound up by the reaction of your karma if you act it on behalf of Jagga or Vishnu or the Supreme Lord. That is the secret. Jagyatha karmana annatra annatra. If you do not work for that supreme purpose, then you will be bound up and your this engagement of body will continue. This engagement of body will continue if you work on your own responsibility and not for the supreme purpose or the supreme Lord, Jagga or Vishnu. That is the secret. <coughs> Jagga means Jagga by Vishnu, it is Sute. Sute, Sute means the Vedic literatures, the Vedic hymns, they prove it. Jagga means Vishnu. Uh, Vishnu Tushartham Karma Samachara. Uh, therefore, we have to work for the satisfaction of Vishnu. That is called Jagga. Saho Jagda Praja Sista Purovacha Prajapati Anena Prasavidhasa Anena Prasavishadhya Mesa Bo Asti Ista Kamadhuk. The proof of the sacrifice, Jagga, is mentioned in the Vedic scripture after the creation. It was so announced that if you want to be happy, you must perform sacrifices. Sacrifices. The Vedic literature is created for guidance of the conditioned souls. Every living being who is in this material world is conditioned by the laws of material nature. And it is a chance that this creation, and especially this human body, is a chance to get rid of this material entanglement. And the chance is open by acting for the satisfaction of Vishnu. Saho Jagga Praja Sista. Praja, Praja means the living entities after being created, they were advised that you perform jagga or sacrifice for the satisfaction of Vishnu. That will, uh, 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 anena, by this prasavishadhyā, uh, you increase your or, uh, enlightenment, prasavishadhyā, and Whatever you want, that will be satisfied by this jagya. Devan jagya, the sacrifice. Devan bhavayatanena ti deva bhavayantuva parasparam bhavayanta sreya param abhartata. Now, jagya is practically, according to the Vedic rituals, jagya or sacrifice is offered to different. Deva, demigods. There are 
hundreds and thousands of demigods uh, mentioned in the Vedic literature. And the whole portion is called Upasana Kanda. Upasana Kanda means worshipping different demigods. But uh, what are these demigods? The demigods are just like different parts of the whole body of the Supreme Lord. They are, so to say, just like the government or the king. There is one king, but there are many state officers. Uh, just we can imagine that if for management of a city like New York, we have got so many departments. As soon as we go to these uh, chambers, uh, we get so many departments, criminal departments, civil departments, and so many departments. So for management of this universal affairs, there are different departments also. So far you can get information from the Vedic literature. And each department, there is a particular director. And Brahma is considered to be supreme director of this universe. So this Jagna sacrifice, right, Vedic rituals, they are indicated to pay different taxes to different demigods. But the Supreme Lord is above all. Therefore, if one performs sacrifice for the Supreme Lord, he is immune for other obligations. That is also mentioned. Devarsi bhuta praninang pitrinang nayang kinkara rinicha rajan sarvatmanada saranam saranam gatu mukundam parihutta kattum. Now, as soon as a living being is born, in this material world. He has got many obligations. He has got obligation to the different demigods. Why obligation? Now because just like the sun is also one of the demigods, he is supplying you light. So you have got some obligation. Don't you have any obligation? If you have got obligation to the electric powerhouse for supplying this light which are enjoying now, have you got no obligation to the sun who is supplying so much profusely light? Yes, you have got. The Vedic literature confirms it that you are indebted to the sun. Similarly, you are indebted to the moon. Similarly, you are indebted to air. And so many things we are taking advantage of the supernatural power. So we are actually indebted. Similarly, we are indebted to the rishis, great sages. Because they have left behind them all this Vedic knowledge, you are taking advantage. Just like this Bhagavad Gita or any scripture, any book of knowledge. So we are indebted. Deva, Rishi, and Bhuta. Bhuta means ordinary general living beings in our dealings. Suppose if I go to consult some lawyer, I have to pay. If I want to consult some medical practitioner, I have to pay. So this is obligation. This is no mercy, this is obligation. Similarly, we are obliged in so many respects to the supernatural power, to the sages, 
to the ordinary living beings and to the animals also, because we are drinking milk from the cows. So we are indebted. But instead of paying our indebtedness, we are killing. You see? These are all reactions. They are creating reaction. If you don't pay bill for the electricity for many long time, your electricity will be cut off. Your telephone will be cut off. But we must be conscious of our indebtedness to so many things. Devarsi Bhutatu Ninang Pitrina. Pitrinang means the family in which you have taken your birth. You are indebted to the forefathers. Therefore, according to Vedic rites, in certain time, you have to offer respect to your forefathers. Sadha ceremony. Oh, during the month of October, there is a general sadha ceremony in India. So we are indebted to the forefathers. Devasi Bhuta Tuninang Pitrinang. So we are in so many ways uh, indebted. Our obligations are there. But Sarvatmana the Saranam Saranam Gatu Mukundam. No, Sarini na Kinkara. The Bhagavad says if somebody fully surrenders unto the Supreme Mukunda, Mukunda means one who can offer you liberation from this material bondage. He is Mukunda. So if one surrenders fully unto Krishna, Krishna is Mukunda, then he is no longer anymore indebted to all these obligations. He is immune. At one stroke, he becomes liquidated from all obligations. And in the Bhagavad Gita, you will find this statement confirmed in the last portion of Bhagavad Gita. The Lord says that Ahantang Sarvapavibha Mukhaishami. If you surrender unto me, Sarvadhanman Parikdajya. The Lord says that you have, do, you have not do, you have to do nothing. You simply surrender unto me. Sarvadharman Parikdajya. You have got so many obligations, it is right. But it is impossible for you. Of course, there are systems how to liquidate your obligation. But especially in this age, Oh, who is going to satisfy the demigods? Who is going to satisfy the poor fathers? Who is going to satisfy the so many obligations as ordinary living beings? Nobody is going. But if you don't satisfy your indebtedness, then there will be reaction. But if you surrender unto the Supreme Lord, you will be protected from all reaction. Therefore, it is very easy. Uh, by one installment, we become free from all obligations. The Sarva Dhanman Parittaja, Mamekang Saranang Raja, Hangtang Sarva Papibha. Papibha, Papibha means the reaction of sins. Now, if I don't repay my indebtedness to the persons to whom I am obliged, then I have become sinner. I am sinner. Just like I owe to you one hundred dollars or one thousand dollars, I don't pay you. So then I become a culprit in the uh, consideration of the state law. I have to pay you. Similarly, all indebtedness has to be liquidated. If you are unable to liquidate, then you will be a sinner. But you can save yourself from the reaction of all sins 
if you surrender unto the supreme law sarvatmanaj saranam saranam gato mukundam parihutu kartum you have got some duty but if you give up all your duty and simply surrender unto the supreme law then you are defeated at once this is the version of bhagavat and this is confirmed in bhagavad gita by the supreme personality of god as sri krishna that if you surrender unto me giving up all your other obligation then i shall give you all protection ang tang sarva papi bha mukha shami now if i am protected from the reaction of my sinful act Uh, but it does not mean that I shall surrender unto the supreme Lord at the same time continue to uh, act sinfully. No, not that. Uh, or if I am obliged to continue, the God or the supreme Lord will protect me. That is the first. Therefore, everyone should act jagga. Jagga means work to satisfy the supreme law. That is called jagga. If we do not do that, then we shall be obliged. Otherwise, otherwise, when the act which is done uh, for the satisfaction of the supreme law, that is immune from all reaction. But anything which is not done for the satisfaction of the supreme law, that will oblige me in so many. bondage of obligation and i'll have to uh, repay that after many many continuation of this repetition of birth and death that is the secret of of our life so devan bhavitani na ti deva bhavanta va parasparam bhavanta swayam param avasasi and if you leave your life for sacrifice Sacrifice of jagga, then you will never be unhappy. You will never be in want. We become unhappy for want of things which is required. This is practical. This is practical. Any one, you will be surprised. I have taken practical information in 1942. There was a manufactured famine in Bengal by the uh, manipulation of the the then government. It is for the first time we experience that India, in our childhood, when we were children, at that time, the first class rice was selling three dollars for eighty-two pounds. Can you imagine three dollars? Not three dollars. I mean to say, dollar is exchange. Uh, uh, say for less than one dollar, three fourth dollar, uh, three rupees. Three rupees. The, the exchange of dollar and rupees is five rupees. Make one dollar. Now it was selling at three eight. So about. I mean to seventy-five cent, seventy-five cent for eighty-two pounds of best rice. Uh, I have seen it in my experience in my life when I, uh, I I was born in India. It was said. Can you imagine that? But that rice, all of a sudden, rose in nineteen forty, ten dollars. Now just imagine, if something, the price of something is raised from seventy-five cent to ten dollars, how difficult it becomes for the public, for general mass of people. So, so many people were in difficulty, and so many people died for want of food, diseases. I mean, because when there is want of food, but he'll be surprised. I inquired in 1942 person 
who were in our line, I mean to say, mm. engaged in devotional service. Uh, I also purchased at the same time. I had in my family life at that time I had some responsibility. I my myself, my wife, my five children, servant, and so many, about ten people. And uh, I was purchasing rice. So anyway, management was going on. But so many people died. But you'll be surprised. Those were and uh, in somewhere other in touch with the devotional service, I inquired from them individually and I was satisfied that they were not in difficulty. Even in that uh, feminine circumstances. Uh, even from the villages I inquired that were you in difficulty, they replied, No, we have no difficulty, somewhere or other we are managing. So this is practical. Anyone who is engaged in the uh, devotional service, whose life is dedicated for service of the Supreme, you will see practically that there will be no want, there will be no unhappiness. Oh. This is a fact. Oh. This is a fact. <coughs> Divan Bhavatanena Ti Deva Bhavantava Parasparam Bhavasyam Parama Bhavsata. Uh, this is Vedic injunction, the injunction is also like that. That you do sacrifice for the Supreme, then you will we'll never be unhappy, you will never be in want. Uh. Now mind that that the work is not stopped. The work in which you are engaged. That is not stopped. We have discussed in the previous verse that niyata purikarnata, the work which is entrusted to you, or the work in which you are now engaged, that is not to be abandoned. You work as you are doing, but you engage your the result of your work or life for the matter of sacrificing for the Supreme Law. There is a very good example in the life of the Goswamis whom we daily pray. Bande Rupa Sanatana Raghujuga Sri Jiva Gopala These six Goswamis, they are very important men of their age in 500 years before. These Rupa and Sanatana, they are great politicians, ministers of the then Mohammedan government in Bengal. In Bengal, at that time, the Pathans were ruling. Before the Mughals came, there were Pathan ruling. For 1000 years, the Mohammedans invaded India from 1000 AD up to uh, 1947. Till the end of the British period, India was under subjugation by so many foreigners, Mohammedans, uh, Greeks, and uh, so many. Uh, lastly, the Mohammedans ruled for 800 years, and the Britishers ruled for 200 years. Uh, so now they have got independence, India. So. At that time, the Bengal was being ruled by the Mohammedans, Pathans, and uh, mm. their interested ministers were these Rupa and Sanatana. They were converted into practically Mohammedan. Hindu society was very strict at that time. Still, they are very strict. Uh, anyone serving uh, a foreigner, he becomes at once. Uh, ostracized, uh, is at once, I mean, say, rejected from the social intercourse. So these uh, brothers, Rupa and Sanatan, because they accepted Mohammedan and uh, ruler's service as minister, uh, they are outcast from the uh, They were actually uh, Brahmins by caste. Somewhere or other, 
this uh, Rupa and Sanatan contacted Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and uh, they retired from their service and joined. And after all, they became uh, the most important leaders of this movement, Rupa and Sanatan. Now, now this Rupa and Sanatan, when they retired from their service, they brought home gold coins. At that time, there was no currency notes actual value, gold coins were in uh, Now that gold coins was about um, two and a half ounce weight. Just like imagine what is the value now, whatever it may be. That means the estimation is some uh, millions of rupees they uh, brought home after their retirement. And they divided the money in this way. Fifty percent for God. Whatever they accumulated, they uh, set aside fifty percent for God or God's service. God means God's service. God is not want of your money. He is quite uh, competent to earn money. He doesn't require anything. But if we give, it is our interest. It is our interest. So he set aside fifty percent of his accumulated money for God, twenty-five percent for the uh, relatives, family members, and twenty-five percent he kept hmm, in some village banker or the original bankers for emergency. So that was the system we can see from great sages and acharyas. Oh. That whatever we earn, the according to Bhagavad Gita, it is said, Jagyatsa Karma Natal. Whatever you want, Jatkarusi Jajyosi. The, the result of your work should be offered to the Supreme. Now, if it is not possible to offer the whole thing to the Supreme, so at least yeah, one should offer fifty percent of his income for God's purpose. That is the example we get from these acharyas. Uh, so uh, fifty percent for God, twenty-five percent, of course, the relatives, they expect something from the father or the chief of the family, some, uh, I mean to say, gift. Uh, they uh, uh, expect something. But according to this acharya ruling, the gift was only twenty-five percent. Not that whatever money I have got, I leave to my family and go single-handed for to God. Oh. If God asks you what you have sacrificed for me, you have come to me. No, sir, I have sacrificed everything from my family, for my family. That is not good. That is not jagga. Jagga means now if you cannot spare your money separately for God's service, then you can engage yourself in God's service and ex- expend the money for God's service. Don't offer your money in others' hand, but you spend yourself. Uh, for God's cause, that will make you perfect. Jagyārtha karma That is explained in the next sloka. Ishtan bhogan hi bodeva dāsante jagyabhāvita tvai dattān pradāya bhya jo bhūngte stena evasa. Now, Ishtan bhogan, whatever you have got for your subsistence, you should know it is given by God. Now, say for example, these grains, the grains, they are given to you by God for eating. You cannot manufacture grain in your factory. You have manufactured or set up so many factories 
for manufacturing tools, machinery, motor carts, uh, and so many other things for your comfort. But there is not, not a single factory in the whole world which can manufacture weights, rice, grains, or vegetables or something like that. So we should consider it that these food stock which we eat daily, they are uh, produced by God's mercy or they are given by God. Istan Bhogani Bodhiva. God or God's agent, whatever it may be. Taidattan, and if you take from, even you produce, even you produce from your land, that is also God's mercy. Because for agriculture, for example, if there is no rain, you cannot produce anything. Now, rain, you have no control over rain. We have, we have come to that point in the next sloka. But if you perform jagas rightly, you will have got, uh, we will have uh, sufficient rains to produce everything. Maharaj Yudhishthira's rain, his kingdom, his government was conducted in that way. Profusely, the nature was producing profusely. Uh, how profusely he was uh, benefited by nature's gift that is stated in the Bhagavad. I shall recite that, uh, I mean to say, verse before you and explain to you. Uh, let, next. So, istan bhogani deva dasante jagabhavita. If you perform this sacrifice, then your necessities will be supplied profusely by the agents of the Supreme Lord. The mind that all, uh, always, that we are not going to be idle. We shall go on with our work as we are doing. But at the same time, we must perform jagas or sacrifice for the Supreme. Then we will have sufficient for our necessities. And now, after having sufficient of our necessities, if we don't acknowledge or don't give the taxes or obligation, feel our obligation, then he said, Tvaidvattan prudaibha. Now God or God's agent is supplying so many things, and if you do not acknowledge or repay by sacrifice, then what is your position? Jo bhunte, one who enjoys, stay na eva sa. He is a thief. He is a thief, therefore punishable. As a thief is punishable by the state law. Similarly, one who takes advantage of these natural uh, facilities and do not acknowledge it and do not offer sacrifice to the Supreme, then he is considered to be a thief. It is said in the Bhagavad Gita. The jagya sista sino santya muchyante sarva kilmisi. So we are becoming daters and daters, life after life, in this way. And the only way to liquidate our so many debts is to perform jagya. Now, there are different uh, rituals of jagga. If we want to perform such jaggas for sacrificing clarified butter, grains, there are different so many kinds of jagga. It is not possible in this age. For this age, the particular type of sacrifice which is recommended. We had some sample of it yesterday in our this loft. Ah. Jagai Sankirtanai Prayai Jajante Hi Sumedhasa. In this age, it is very difficult to perform all those rituals. First thing, it is very difficult to obtain all the ingredients for sacrificing uh, method and 
people are not very well to do they cannot secure also ah. the symptoms of the people of this age is also described ah. prayana alpayusa sabhya kalavasmin yuge jana prayana in this age people are generally short living they are not living for more than uh, 60 or 70 years formerly they were living more than 100 years gradually their duration of life is decreasing and it is stated also that the it will decrease to such a extent that any man who is living from 20 to 30 years he will be considered a very old man that is also stated in the bhagavad that is of course that is not yet come but it will come in this age so the symptoms of the people of this age are described that people are of very short life paina alpa aisa sabha kalavasmin jugi jana manda and they are very lazy and slow ha uh, slow and lazy means that they do not know that this life is meant for spiritual realization ah so they are very lazy ah all life spiritual realization we shall see later on let us enjoy life that's all oh. so this is a great disqualification of the human being that they are not uh, wake up Uh, for spiritual realization, lazy, manda, and manda bhagya, manda samanda matayo, and if somebody is at 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 all interested for some spiritual enlightenment, then unfortunately, uh, uh, manda samanda they adopt some spiritual method which is not recognized. spiritual realization with relationship with god uh, is no spiritual realization the whole spiritual realization means one must understand he is relationship with the supreme lord but generally in, in these says they want to have heard the conception of god and at the same time they want to be spiritually advanced that was their call sumanda mata a and i mean to say mm-hmm. a, a very degraded form of uh, spiritual realization without concession of god sumanda mata yo manda as lazy and if they are at all interested in in some spiritual realization process they try to avoid the conception of god sumanda mata and manda bhagya manda bhagya means unfortunate people of this age mostly they are not very fortunate in any part of the world they are not very fortunate they do not get things desirable things very easily ah uh, our desirable things are four things for living purposes ahar nidra vayu mithun ah uh, uh, eating sleeping and uh, defense and mating these are our generally so far as our body is concerned so these things are also not easily available samanda samanda mata ye mandu bhagya upadrita and at the same time in spite of all these disqualification they are always disturbed in mind uh, why disturb that their rog shoka adhi for some lamentation and for some disease So this is the condition of the people of this age, and it is very difficult for them to follow the uh, system of sacrifice, which was being performed in the older days. Uh, now, for them in this age, Lord Chaitanya recommended this sacrifice, this Sankirtan Jag, which we are trying to perform here. संकीर्तन जज्ञ ही संकीर्तन ही प्राह ही जजंती ही सुमेध 
Now, those who have got uh, better brain, they will adopt this process of Sankirtan Jagga for satisfaction of the Supreme Lord. That way is very helpful for the uh, uh, men of this age that is recommended in Bhagavatam. <coughs> Now either you adopt this jagga or that jagga according to your capacity. Uh, but you must have to perform jagga. Without jagga you cannot be happy. Jagga sista sino santa muchanti sarvakilm sai bunyante te aghang papa je pachanti atmakarnat. Now pachanti atmakarna means cooking. The cooking is the most important business of our life. Uh, cooking, nobody is human being. Uh, we are not cats and dogs, but every human being has to cook things for eating. Uh, now this eating process, the Lord says that one who takes the eatables after they sacrifice, then he becomes free from all kinds of sinful reactions. And one who cooks for himself, for enjoyment, then he eats all kinds of sins. All kinds of sins. Jagga sister sina santa. Santa. Santa means saints and sages. They do not take anything without offering jagga. Oh. At least whenever you take something, if you offer the same thing to the Lord, my Lord, it is by your grace I have got this eatable. You kindly accept it and I shall take the remnants. Oh. This is jagga. This is also jagga. So just uh, yesterday we prepared some food. Uh, cooperatively and offer to Lord and perform Sankirtan and we took it. This is the simplest process of performing Jagga uh, because we require food. So this was done here in this loft as a matter of example. But you can do it in your home also because you are cooking for your children, for yourself, for your wife, uh, for family members. Now if you cook nicely things which are to be offered to the Lord, of course we must be careful to prepare food stuff because we are going to offer to the Lord and we must offer things which is acceptable by the Lord, uh, at least. Of course Lord can accept anything and everything. He is quite competent, uh, because all all powerful, almighty. But still, in the Bhagavad Gita, it is say, the Lord says, Patram Pusvam Phalam Toyam Jumi Bhakta Prajachati. Anyone who gives me these four things, Patram Pusvam Phalam Toyam. That means uh, grains, vegetables, and flowers, fruits, all these things, anyone who offers me, I take them. Uh, offers with taya bhakta uh, with devotion. Uh, not that God is hungry and therefore He is hankering after your offering of food stuff. No, that. Uh, he is quite competent. He has got many things to eat. It is practically His things we are eating. Uh, so, but still, if we prepare food stuff in that way and offer to the Supreme Lord, uh, then after offering, if we take, then we become free from uh, all sinful reactions. That is stated here. Jagga sister sino santa muchyante. Muchyante means he becomes liberated, freed from. Uh, what? What is that? Sarva kilmi say all kinds of sinful reactions. That's all. But one who does not do so, bhunyante te aghang papa, they must be eating only sins. Only sins. 
So we have to suffer the sinful reaction also. Jipachantyatmakarma. But the thing is, now, it is very easy. What? You are going to the store, just like yesterday, a day before yesterday, Mr. Karl and Mr. Paul went to some store. Oh, tomorrow it will be jagga. Uh, so, mm. the bad things are purchased with the purpose of perfection. The same thing we are purchasing from the store, but we are thinking I sell it. That if you transfer that epithet only, that this is we are purchasing things for God's eating. So there is no loss on your part, but you perform jagga. You perform jagga. This practice has to be done. If you practice these simple things, then you become free from all sinful reactions. Ah. And if you don't do this, then what happens? One who does not do this, he eats only sinful reaction and he has to pay for that. He has to suffer for that. Pachanti Atmakarma. He, he has no relation with the Jagga or Vishnu. Uh, but he thinks that I shall eat. Uh, so the, the beginning of the process of Jagga in this age can be very easily done by everyone. Uh, either he is family man or single man or any. Everyone has to cook for himself. Now that cooking may be done for the Supreme Lord. And after cooking the food stuff, offer it to the Supreme Lord and perform this Jagga Sankita. Jag, uh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Then you become free from all sinful. After all, whatever we are doing, we are committing some sort of, even unknowingly, even unknowingly. There are Recommendation and these Vedis, Pancha Jagga. Pancha Jagga means that unknowingly we are killing many living entities. Suppose you are, when you are walking on the street, there are many ants uh, who are being killed on the pressure of our shoes. Uh, so that is also counted as sin. Uh, in God's kingdom, in God's, I mean to say, state, Oh, just like here, you have to pay by your life if you kill one man. If you commit a murder, you have to repay this murdering sin by your own life. Oh, that is, of course, an imperfect law, man-made law. Similarly, in God's law also, if you kill any living entity, oh, you have to oh, suffer for that. Because in the God's eyes, there is no question of man or animal or ant or fly or something like that. Oh. Every living entity is the son of God. Now suppose your father has got five sons. One of them is worthless, is doing nothing. And if the other son says, my dear father, this son, your youngest son or this son is worthless, is doing nothing, let us kill him. Will your father agree? Uh, because he is what left, will your father agree? No. He will say, no, no, no. You, you have nothing to do. He is not harming you. He is eating my, my subsistence. I am uh, paying for his subsistence. Why you should kill him? Uh, similarly, in this material nature, all these living entities in different forms, they have come uh, for material enjoyment. And everything is being supplied by the Supreme Law. We have no right to kill them. We have no right. According to God's law, uh, if one is conscious, uh, the same thing, just like the father will never agree to kill a worthless child by the uh, competent boy. No. So, consciously or unconsciously, we are committing, suppose I am not willingly um, killing any animal, but unconsciously I am killing so many living entities by my walking, 
by my so many things, they are called pancha jagas in the Vedic. So, and, and even if we can do not kill animals, simply by eating vegetables, they are also life. Ah, it does not mean that vegetarians are not killing, they are also killing. Ah, the law is that a living entity lives by killing other living entities. Ah, that is the law. Ah. Ah. <coughs> the, those who have got hand, they are killing. Those who have got legs, just like man is killing animal. The animal is eating the grass. Those who have no legs. So this is the law. But, uh, uh, but our thing is that we have to offer jagga. Uh, killing of animals does not mean that if a man kills a cow or goat for eating, he is killing. And those who are vegetarian, they are not killing, they are also killing. But the vegetable has also got life. So it is not the question of killing. It is the question of offering jagga. It is a question of offering jagga. Even animal eaters and the flesh eaters, they have also some process for offering jagga. Oh. In the basic process, in the and flesh eaters, they are also prescribed that you can perform jagga like this. The jagga must be there. Jagga must be there. But uh, for, um, so far we are concerned who are going to have Krishna consciousness. Uh, well, we have to take the instruction of Krishna, as he says in the Bhagavad Gita. He says that patram puspam phalam tuyam. He is asking food stuff prepared from vegetable kingdom. Therefore, we have to prepare things from vegetable kingdom nicely and very palatably and offer Krishna and then take it. This jagga will make us free from all kinds of sins and our life will be sublime. Thank you very much. Any questions?